You're strong. I know. Just like in the movies. Welcome to Super Wonder Legacy, the only show that knows that Lois Lane is Lois Lame. I'm Jared. I'm here with Britt. What's up, Britt? Hello, hello. So I love it, uh, introducing all my shows like that. It's awesome. So <laughs> today we are doing a, a bit of another thought experiment that we did. So in a past episode, we did one. Let's fix the new f f 52. Because as much of a fan of the, the initiative as we are, we'll admit there were mistakes with that. So that got me thinking, how would we, if we were brought into DC now, as it stands, how would we fix the company? And obviously that involves the building towards Super Wonder, but we wanted to sort of do a little thought experiment on that so we can get started with this lovely image by Jen Bartel. I, I, I love this art so much. And there were people on Twitter that tried to claim that that was platonic. I'm like, I'm sorry, that ain't platonic. <laughs> No way. I mean, it, even with the just the isolated um, image itself, and when she first posted it, people thought that it was a commission. Like, a fan, of course, wanted a um, romantic image. Mm -hmm. But then when she came out and said, no, this is, like, f for a comic, it was like, oh, my God, what is this about? You know, you had people thinking that it's going to be an Elseworlds. You had people thinking that um, DC is going to bring them back in some type of way, whether it's a, uh, a new Superman and Wonder Woman book or they were going to have them in continuity back together somehow. And honestly, if that would have happened, let the heads roll because oh, yes <laughs> I, I still think I'm going to manifest this on the show. I think that's going to happen soon. Honestly, like, with what's going on with DC, they don't have room to limit the the creativity. I mean, they already are limiting themselves. Well, yeah, it's DC, so what you expect. Yeah. But the crea creativity of, like, the stories that can be told, and especially mm -hmm. with Superman and Wonder Woman being... Honestly, you don't even have to have the romance right away. The thing that makes people love their relationship is because first and foremost, they are friends. Mm -hmm. And that tension between them that, you know, will they, won't they, are they, aren't they, you know, that really draws us in. Um Exactly. And that was the, that was my issue with it in the new 52 is that it just happened. And I'm like, you could, if they had released like comics that take place during those five years from origin to uh, the, the, to the villain's journey, then I would have gotten that. And I would have been like, okay, cool. They're putting them together. We're seeing them work together. We're seeing them fall in love. But then it's like, okay, so we don't see any of that. So it's literally like they meet we don't see the five years and they're, they're together. And I'm like, something's, something's not here. Right. Honestly, I think that that is the main thing is that they could have, um, like started the Superman and Wonder Woman book with soul, especially with him because he knows how to write them. Um, he could have did the flashback of, whatever happened between you know those five years yeah we can get the gist of it but it's still the fact of it, it's not all there and In my own head canon what clark would do because he's clark he brings her coffee on her monitor duty all the time and he like what, what i can imagine clark doing is is particularly when he realizes he really likes diana he would show up and keep her company on monitor duty even though he's done just because he's he wants to be near her yeah, something like that. That that would have been so cute, first of all, that this mm -hmm. just and them just hanging out or whatever. 
yeah definitely or even the sparring you know oh um, yeah because Charles... that that one issue that uh, where he gives him the meal there that shows what, what it's like when they're sparring yeah charles he he really set that up too because um what is that when she says i'm the woman to teach you mm -hmm. and it's like yeah that's what we want to see we can want i to see that these. actually i would i would have lo lo loved to see her teaching him to to, to uh, have a sword and, and then she's like she's swinging it and then clark is, is really like Cajun. she goes clark you know i wouldn't stab you right and she goes yeah but it's a magic blade i can't take any chances <laughs> right that is something that we just it was there it just missed it especially mm -hmm. with editorial um prematurely uh, taking Charles off the book, and then the fact of how to well, yeah. he who shall not be named, <laughs> <laughs> how he just totally 180, 360 or whatever the book into something that not even the fans liked, and and the contradictory double standard that he had well of Superman and Wonder Woman was in this honeymoon phase. They were in this um he i think he called it rainbows and sunshine and rainbows or, or sun or rainbows and picnics and it's kind of like well she almost killed are, him when he was doomsday how is that rainbows and picnics right and they are those type of characters where they are sunshine and rainbows but at the same time they do deal with like hardcore stuff mm -hmm. and that is what charles pretty much baselined it it wasn't so much of them in a honeymoon phase i don't think having Apollo wanting to um, go after Clark, honeymoon, or the fact that they had to deal with two Kryptonians that were they had to uh, detonate a nuke. So I'm yeah. pretty sure that's not. But the the other thing I will say about Charles Sewell, and the, and the f funny part is that whenever anyone complains about new Fifty Two Superman not being Superman, I say, well, he is. If you t talk about the new Golden Age, like you say, but I always say, no matter your opinion on that, read the Superman Wonder Woman book because that is pretty much him being the soup the classic superman that we lo know and love he just happens to be in love with a different woman at this point yeah and i i really don't know don't understand that because just because they are with a, a person as long as it doesn't take away their character and what they say is that superman and wonder woman they think of themselves as gods there's it's two gods together since when and right and it's like obviously you have not read anything or don't comprehend it because their very their very first conversation very very first in justice league 12 diana literally says we are not gods but we're not mortals either it's like right there yeah i'm um, like if you actually this is the problem with like anti-new 52ers are like anti Snyders. They're always they they always make these pseudo intellectual comments, and then I'm always like, "Did you read or consume the material?" No, it shows. Yeah, it it. I mean, it's right there in black and white or whatever. The text is right there. They do not care for being gods. They don't even think of themselves. The perspective is though, is that people on the outside see perceives them as gods that is where the narrative comes from and it's kind of like you also are proving injustice. Them right. speaking of last week's episode yeah and injustice the thing is and, and what's so funny is that right now um on twitter x land superman fans are having like i guess they're feeling feeling themselves in a sense of Anyone who says something against Superman, they are constantly going after that tweet and bullying people. And it's kind of like, you can have these debates, but you don't go and attack these random people that you have no idea, you don't know them. And Cut to me making anti-Lois Lane tweets. <laughs> honestly, I mean, you are a comic fan. So you you pretty much have that right to express your opinions. I've always Anybody? said, based on what I have read, I don't yes. like the character. Uh, it's just based on I, uh, and I read. I haven't read everything. I know there are some books that portray Lois Lane pretty decent. It's just based upon what I've read and what DC is doing with her now. I, I just don't like the character. And that's it. 
Exactly. And that's what I mean is that you you actually read the con uh all the content. So it's that that didn't resonate with you. So mm-hmm. you have an opinion on the content. But what they go after is the general audience people mm-hmm. that don't consume certain things and they have that outlook on these characters is because what they do see it doesn't resonate with them well again so you, you know it's kind of funny all, all the, the general audience people in my, in my vicinity that i've talked about they're like oh okay i can see superman with wonder woman yeah funny how that even, works right it, even with the instagram instagram is a visual congratulations uh, platform thank you and with instagram you all, all you're doing yeah you post the caption you might post um but it's pictures and that visual resonates with people it's eye-catching and all the fan art all the um comic panels or anything like that mm-hmm. the general audience that i've you know gained they it, it resonates with them it catches their attention and that's, that's what i've always tried to tell these people is that hey listen you may not like this material but this was someone's introduction to dc and l- l- let me give you an example what i did i i read the new 52 and then i was like okay you know what w- let me read more about these characters. So I went back and I read post crisis a little bit silver age, but I read modern stuff. I read uh, that was my vehicle because that broke the characters down to a point where I was like, okay, now I get why these characters are so cool. and Why people love them. So let me go read more of them. Right. And, and still, even if you, and we've all done that, your entryway is whether it be justice league, of uh, the, 2001 cartoon just the unlimited or um super friends or it can be um the the movies that is your entryway and everyone has an entryway but when you read if you you know feel like reading you know um from the beginning until now and a certain perspective that you have um that you have doesn't change it's okay if you still like a certain um status quo or a certain pairing that is okay the what's not okay is that you're trying to force your opinion as a fact and i I, I will say Britt, you sent me that tweet by uh, about by mitch gerards that there's a lot of younger readers that are attacking creatives and i'm like yeah it, granted, some writers encourage it indirectly, but I'm just going to tell you right there. Yeah, thank you for calling that behavior out because that has to stop. Because here's right. the thing. The, I'm going to play the clip right now because you know what? This feels like extremely like, where is it? This seems very like appropriate to be playing at this point. Where is it? Well, here we go. Okay, they're talking about fictional characters. Fictional characters. Yeah. They're not exactly. people. Yeah, but the thing is, when he says this, for so long, this attitude has been enabled by creators, though. Yeah, exactly, as I said before. With how they dealt with Rebirth, the transition from New 52 you know, to Rebirth, how you have Dan Jargons, um, Jargons you have uh-huh. Tomasi, Gleason, Rucka, you have them straight say that this is a superman that you should love and in story saying that new 52 superman was a fake that he wasn't um, or like he... when wonder woman goes to lois with her and superman this feels true yeah <sighs> or or the whole um that he yeah that he wasn't superman that he wasn't the real one or um i think it was gary uh frank Mm-hmm. They said, yeah, the, the real Superman is back. And... I mean, the coward Superman. But by the way, Brent, all those rebirth Superman issues I got, they were in the dollar bins. Worst dollars I've ever spent. Wow. They were yes. in the do- yeah, a lot of that, you know, it's kind of funny. A lot of that stuff is not like immortalized or anything. It ends up in dollar bins a lot. Yeah, because it didn't, 
what they wanted was the old fans that that do complain on Twitter. And but those fans just want what they want. They True. and 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 even Williamson, the current Superman writer, he he said that, you know, we give the fans what they want, the happy stuff, the with um more like, optimistic. Yeah, and um even trying to be with the romance of Lois and Clark and stuff like that. He said that people aren't buying it. They aren't supporting. They were rather It's the support. same thing with the movies because people complained about Snyder's movies being too dark. The minute they went into a very overly like comedic way, guess what happened? No one showed up. Yeah. Um, you have, he said that, um, yeah, people want to buy the controversy. They want to basically hate buy. And yeah, controversy does get attention, but it's a gamble too because just like with john uh john kent tom taylor he admitted that that was very rushed because of dc wanting the pr um it was a pr stunt and yeah that issue certain issue did go up Mm -hmm. but then it dropped like a brick like a ton ton of bricks right back down well yeah the very next issue because like we had the speculators, of course, John comes out as buying this issue. Of course, they're going to pick that up because they, they think that John Ken's going to be a valuable character l- l- later on. And then. And the thing is, what they did, though, is that they weren't being honest. They said Superman was bisexual. Yeah, I know. Say... I saw that. That's why. And, and I tell you, that's why they did it when when John was the current Earth Superman, because they're like, okay, so now we can have this headline. Let's do it. Yeah. So when you know that everyone knows Superman is Clark Kent, you know, so with you basically manipulating the audience like that, of course it's not going to uh, go right. And and then you, that John didn't have anything else. He doesn't have anything else for himself but the fact of his sexuality that's it um i mean look at how he's drawn now it just it doesn't work but anyway so going to here and and talk about where things stand so the thing so you have joshua williamson like we said before he's a pretty good writer and i've enjoyed his superman run for the most part then you have philip candy johnson which short of that war world suit fiasco i have enjoyed extra I have very much enjoyed his War World Saga. I still have to have to get get and read the War World Saga trade. I will, but I've loved his action comics run. I love his Green Lantern um, War Journal. He he did a lot with like John Stewart and really fleshing out that character in Dawn of DC. So I really appreciate it. And Tom King, um, I'm indifferent about Tom King's Wonder Woman so far. There's some things I like, but there's also some things I really don't like. Yeah. Okay. So with Williamson, I think he's he's basically going on the ni- late '90s, early 2000s. That is pretty much the era that he's pulling from for his Superman, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, I guess it's fine, but not really. Mm-hmm. If he's complaining about you know um, sales, um, uh, Philip. Yes, he is very, very good with Superman, with uh, the saga, Mm -hmm. and the idea behind it was basically going back to the champion of the oppressed yep um and the moses allegory it's like in the in his war world in the first trade of the war world saga that i have when superman finds out about like everything going down even when the justice league says hey listen dude if you just wait We'll we'll go w- w- with you until this crisis like uh, boils down. And Superman goes, "No, these people are suffering. I have to go now." And the thing is, what would have been cool, but would have been a great crossover with Wonder Woman because. But here's the thing: that's Hippolyta Wonder Woman, though. And the thing is, even with Hippolyta, that really didn't make sense for her mm. to say wait. She would never do anything like that so 
I get the, and, and that's the thing too that gets me is that they have to do a lot of contrived type plotting with the characters because you know that that certain character would not just sit and wait, but you have to turn off half your brain and mm-hmm. ignore that character to to just go with the story. And especially when he wanted the authority there too. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, we understand that, but obviously if you want this to work just use the characters that you know instead of trying to you know make them what they're not to use you know different characters exactly and the thing is by the way so jay heat and i do our new direction universe every sunday and one of our ideas i'm gonna tease it it's a super wonder honeymoon on war world wow (laughs) yes yeah, it was my idea because I'm like, okay, so Wonder Woman's a warrior. And of course, she would be like, hey, Clark, let's go to War World. And he's like, we'll go where? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> my idea. So I love that. But to, to, to that point, I know. So the, the thing about um, Kenny Johnson is that he gets the basis of Superman. That's been a, that's been a long – he's arguably the best – he was arguably – the palate cleanser after the travesty that was Superman by Bendis. And it was so good to get someone that's like, nah, I'm just going to sh- tell you how to, nah, I'm just going to tell a kick-ass Superman story with him becoming He-Man. Yes. I love it. Yeah. That, that really worked. But the thing is going back to the fans, mm-hmm. um, constantly badgering creators. So because of his story, you had Lois fans going to him and saying, where's Lois, where's Lois, where's Lois? And it's kind of like, okay, why would she be on uh, War World in exactly. the first place? Um, she has nothing, she can't fight. Even though what Tomasi did. The, the, oh, you mean the Hellbat armor? Or w- yeah. when she fought all the female furies? <sighs> you jump in the shark to make, to make her have a role. To make her have a role. And it just it wasn't gonna do so of course he tried to i guess con uh uh basically like not bow down to them but coddle them in the way or pet them or something like that Mm -hmm. and he i believe he said that he fought for the ending of um the saga of them you know being together or whatever so editorial i guess didn't want it and he wanted it you know that whole thing and it's kind of like well if editorial is so stuck on trying to um keep this marriage you know because really it it serves no purpose just like the kents being alive they have arguably that, that serves more of a purpose than lois but i see what you're saying there they do for cutesy moments for like the moments where yeah maybe clark does need advice at some point but it's not a necessity mm-hmm. not you know it, it's it's not and um, if it was so big how come dan didia was costly trying to get rid of it exactly and and really we are seeing why he got rid of it or why he wanted to in the first place because it really serves no purpose the only purpose it really serves is for Lois to have a role. And mm-hmm. when fans say that Diana is reduced to a girlfriend or something like that. Oh my gosh, Clark, I remember like, I saw well, that. Lois is reduced because she has no other role. If she isn't the wife or the girlfriend, she serves no other purpose. Case in point, Even, whenever they gave her her own series, and I'm not talking about the Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, by the way, when they when Rucker gave her her own series, guess what? It didn't sell well. I wonder exactly. why. Right. And um, so, yeah, so with Williamson and, and now the action um, books, they are well action it is now just a like an anthology Mm -hmm. so they don't really have a permanent writer for action comics anymore and yeah action um the sales i guess because um kennedy his he got critical and fan um the reactions and reception that was good Mm -hmm. but 
again, the sales were not there. So obviously he got kicked off the book. Um, but he said that he's the, the I guess the plots, um, plot threads that he had lingering, he's going to wrap it up in another book. Most likely some of it will be in Green Lantern. Um, War Journal, probably. War Journal. Um, but yeah, so so that's that. Now we're on to Tom King. Oh yeah, now, Tom King. Oh boy. <laughs> um, <sighs> I would say that he can do miniseries. He can do one shots, mm-hmm. but ongoings he cannot do. Because after all, by the way, Wonder Woman is his first time in continuity doing a regular run since Batman. Right, and and he was fired from Batman, or so they say, because of the debacle of the failed um, marriage, or mm-hmm. you know, of Batcat, which is pretty much uh, Dan DiDio fault and editorial not wanting Batman to be committed because, of course, Batman they think that you know marriage and stuff they don't want Batman to be like Superman where Mm -hmm. he is shackled to limitations of a marriage Mm -hmm. so and and even with now in the Batman books you have Batman I think solo um in a little you know out of his mind but in detective comics you have Selina and Talia sort of working together and you have for Batman yeah exactly yeah and you have Talia calling him beloved. You know, she can steal a kiss, you know, here and there. And Bat- and Catwoman clearly still loves Bruce. And they are, it's basically like, in a weird way, it's an open relationship or like, in a sense of like polygamy in a way. Well, the way I understand it is, is... Batman and Catwoman basically came to an agreement that we don't need to get married in order to understand that we still have feelings for each other or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that gave a doorway to where you can have Talia um, as another option as a love interest. And there's really no issue with that at all. So, but with Tom King, it, it feels like it's a story that he wants to tell, but he has to change the character's personalities to fit the story yeah. instead of the story fitting the character. Hence, he was in crisis. Yeah. So with Diana, he he says that in his head, her accent is like um, Gal Gadot. And that's fine with her having an accent um i guess the way she talks you know just just the general of having an accent is but gal gadot has more emotion and uh when she talks as opposed to this wonder woman but yeah his his wonder the thing is he kind of it's like she has a broken english and understood that diana in my head diana does have an accent and she and also her english english isn't her first language of course Mm -hmm. but as she's in man's world though she does gravitate more and talks a little bit more um a little bit more with an english you know Mm-hmm. way about herself but it's not it still doesn't take away her her um amazonian way of speaking mm-hmm. and she talks with a very distinctive vocabulary too but that doesn't mean that she's stilted <laughs> yeah thing. she sounds emotionally stilted in his books honestly yeah and, and even like yara and cassie and donna speak with more emotion and and also he he has her, she's kind of cold. Like mm-hmm. the way she speaks about um, even Steve, it's a condescending, cold type way, a little sarcasm. Which I love because of Steve Trevor, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah she she doesn't really he doesn't have a voice for diana and and just the perspective is the villain which it's okay but we need more of diana's thoughts Mm -hmm. and um well he said that it would be thought bubbles it will be an issue in his latest interview he said that there there will be an issue with thought bubbles but i don't know he he never specified if it's diana's thoughts or you know whose thoughts would would that be um imagine her thoughts are like why did i drink all that nyquil now it's wearing off and i actually have emotions now (laughs) i I had to i had to then we also Um, get this this nice man right here so mark right yeah so we are um let's see so he is writing he's off of shazam now Mm -hmm. because apparently he has another project and but he is doing world finest and Mm -hmm. he admits that the the market isn't in big trouble but Mm -hmm. it is in trouble it's in some trouble that is soft as i well mark wade you were in a sense responsible for one of the greatest you know stories for DC's history in the late 90s. Arguably more and, Alex Ross. Well, yeah. Um, and you didn't think that some of the concepts, you know, might have had not aged too well, but they still work. You are featuring as such in your world's finest book right now. So why don't you capitalize more, get Alex, you know, back into DC? and capitalize on this story Mm -hmm. to an actual sequel and yeah his his world finest book is more of like silver age bronze age i think i'm leaning more on that sort of status quo Mm -hmm. and it's working that's the highest yeah is batman um 50 50 with batman but it is the Basically it's one of the highest, highest selling, it's one of the highest selling books at DC. Right now, yes. So this obviously this works. No. The status quo of Dawn of DC rebirth or whatever, the marriage, John, even with the twins. What status that, quo? All right. Um, even with the twins that Kennedy introduced, they really first the thing with what DC is doing with these legacy characters or these kids it's not is, working. It's not working, but it's also part of the self insertion of the of the writer. Yeah. If he has if yeah, if he And has the, the other thing is the the reason why they did the twins thing for Superman is because they wanted to D H John. Well they wanted to try and appease the, the crowd that wants the crowd, them to D H yeah. John. But exactly. they don't realize that's not working. Exactly. So the the twins didn't really have a role in anything except for that. So, you know, they are pretty redundant. Um so you have you you have that whole thing. And honestly, I think that um Wade he wants to expand his world's finest his universe or whatever. Mm-hmm. Why not do that? Why not have the world's finest Silver Age, Bronze Age, you know, set of books and have these different lines set in even different eras where people can pick what they want. You see what era works better or even just the book itself. Just have a line where it can be in any era you already have the whole everything is canon you know everything is everything Mm -hmm. so just do that everything is everything that's your line um just to try to help the market because if you if you are constantly doing the same thing and you're very self-aware 
it's stale um, story. If you know, it, see, here's the thing: it's arguably worse if they talk about well, oof, fans are bored of us doing the same thing all over again. It's really worse if they're self aware of it because it seems like they're doing this, but they're tanking the market on purpose. Yeah, and it's like, what are you? What are you? So who is this for? Is it for your own self? Which it seems like it seems like you're doing this for your own self. And yes, writers are fans too, but at the same time, you have to be professional. And yes, they aren't. Like, well, yeah, they're very. It's, uh, yeah, the very fact that like Tomasi blasts people for being Superman and Wonder Woman fans, I'm like, nah, sorry. But it's like even King, he, uh, according to this, he said, yeah, the market's not good. He's optimistic it'll get better. I agree with him that it can get better. The the way you get better, it's not an, 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 an necessarily bringing Super Wonder. The only reason why we're using that as an example is because that's something that has a sustainable fan base that shows up for stuff. I mean, the, the numbers on this show itself compared to my other stuff shows that. But the other thing is it, you have to stop catering to twitter and move beyond a little bit beyond nostalgia because because uh, that's showing you that th that it's not working yeah we're not saying that superman and wonder woman being together is like the end all be all answer to every problem we're not saying that what we're saying is basically like anything can help somehow if you have a concept that has a sustainable fan base, like you just said, use it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you got to use it because your sales are not working right now. And the problem is they keep investing in a lot of these books that clearly aren't meant to sell like thousands of issues. Uh, well, I'm sorry, more than thousands. But the pro the point is they bring in all these niche books. They don't sell. And, uh, and then it gets off to like, because a lot of the stuff is like to promote diversity and all that stuff, which is fine. That's awesome. It's just, you can't prioritize this in an industry that is arguably shrinking. Yeah, there, there really isn't any room for those kind of books. And, and also with DC, they can't sustain um, ongoings. Every book that they launch has to be a six issue mini. And then if it has enough sales, then they'll extend it to an ongoing. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. no, first it'll it'll do the six issues, then the 12, then the ongoing, which mm -hmm. is kind, it's really sad that these books, you have to do it in phases mm -hmm. or steps. I know. And it's like, it, if you know that you have, if you, already know once you launch this book that it's a 50 50 chance that this book can only last six issues and it's kind of like well we're not putting the investment in there why even try to publish it in the first place mm -hmm. what you need to invest in is concepts that actually do work john he's not working go ahead and just like Put him somewhere in a pocket universe, or, or put him with the Legion. That, that's it. Just leave him there. Even even the Legion, um, Mark Wade. He said that Legion, the franchise, is not sustainable. So they constantly want these uh, concepts that aren't working. Even Tom's King Trinity, Lizzie. Oh, that ain't gonna last long. His Gen S. First of oh all, you God. don't have a good you don't have a good name. As soon as that name group. came out, I can show you my reaction to it right now. Uh, here, here's my reaction to it. I am not impressed. Yeah, Gen S is Generation Hope, and first, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the Trinity. Um, it's like saying hello, fellow kids. Yeah, definitely. You have um, Trinity kind of being condescending to say that uh, Clark, Diana, and Bruce were privileged. They were not privileged. Oh, Bruce, God. He, <laughs> when they talked Bruce, about the privilege, I was like, oh, boy, here comes the social justice stuff. 
yeah, Bruce lost his parents, you know, right in mm-hmm. front of him. Clark lost his whole planet and had to be shipped off to another planet. Where he grew um, up as a farmer. Yeah, he and he grew up hiding himself. Um, Trinity being adopted, her with Diana, with her own mother, Emily, um, if that is the way the story is going to go, which it seems like it, she was a product of seeing like assault. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then Diana, she is a product of a love affair, (laughs) Mm -hmm. cheating, if you go with the Zeus origin. And even with Diana going with the clay origin, Diana was still lonely as a child if she's the only um, child on the island. So no, it's not privileged in that way at all. They have had to work for being the heroes that they were. And what John, Damien, and Trinity, they are the ones that are privileged. They are the ones that are nepotism babies, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, John, he has... Gen- they should be Gen N, Generation Nepotism. Yes. Because... That's what I, I am coining that name. <laughs> you can't go ahead. <laughs> because John, he... Again, he's just a carbon copy of Clark. The only thing is his sexuality. Damien... Damien had a little bit more story because he's going back and forth with um, the Al Ghouls. So he had a little bit more depth. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. say he is so much as privileged because of the trauma that he went through um, with the back and forth. Now, Trinity, I, honestly, the way she's brought in and the way it... It just seemed like with you trying to write her as an adult now or, you know, a young adult, you can't really invest in her character because you see her as this, the first um, backup is her six years old, but she's not, but she's with Damien and John, they're babysitting. You don't see her with the Wonder Girls. You don't see her with Diana. You don't see even within the, the, um, the story Diana well, Britt, is here's not why in... she was created just because superman and batman have kids yeah and and the fact that it was actually uh mitch his mm-hmm. idea was for um john and damien to babysit mr miracle and um big barda's mm-hmm. son so mm-hmm. yeah i get that but if you are going to revamp the story at least make it make sense for the character Diana is not in that space of being a mother. She's not, there's no lead to that. New 52 with Clark, that made sense if they were to have a child or something because that Plus, was brought up. Yeah, I was about to say, they actually brought that up in the thing where she's like, I never thought about having kids until I met Clark and founded the Justice League and all that stuff. Right. Um. Even post-crisis diana she always dreaming of having a baby of course with clark but when she was ready to i think it was um tom tresher when she just like wanted mm. to have a baby but i it, remember that it was really yeah but it was really no love in it she just wanted a baby so mm-hmm. yeah if you had that kind of story i can see that but with this diana during rebirth first the way rucka put her in a psych ward um, Mm -hmm. and had her whole life as this lie. Then you had... Even though that doesn't work because Superman has been to Themyscira in the New 52. Yeah. Um, You have just this whole... I guess also Tom King, he said that Diana right now is in her mid-30s. Which... And she's only been in man's world for like 10 years I'm like no that does not make sense at all especially with i know that john was aged up but still the way that dc's timeline or DC doesn't have a timeline Brit. Let, let's don't. face it 
um, it still just wouldn't make sense. If you want to say that first, I guess her whole, um, she's been in man's world since uh, World War Two. that's mm-hmm. out. But even with saying that she's only been in man's world for 10 years, that, no, that does not make sense. With um, Donna's age, Cassie, um, not so much as your, but uh, Clark, just however old he's supposed to be, which I think that Jurgens was trying to make him, like, they're in this stagnant of being only 38 years old Mm -hmm. so i'm like that definitely doesn't work with john even if he were to have him um that means that what he would have had him like at 28 Mm -hmm. which but i i believe the timeline of death of superman he was like 32 so Mm -hmm. yeah that none of this timeline non-existing one makes sense so yeah, Diana has been in man's world for more than ten years. Way more and... than ten years. It, it, that's the problem with like not establishing a firm timeline because then you have all these slipshod writers going back and forth in the timeline, and it doesn't make sense. And that that works if you're talking about an Elseworld story, but you're writing in the continuity. Right. So just just the whole thing of trying to force this idea of Diana becoming a mother, adopted or not. It, it just wouldn't work with her character right now um, because she's not in a, she can be a single mother. I mean, hey. Um, or Clark can get away from Lois. <laughs> yeah, that, that can work too. Um, but still her her mentality right now is not Mother Diana. It, it, it is just not. Particularly not in the story that he's telling right now. I'm like, <laughs> is not the wonder woman that wants to have a kid and according to dc steve trevor's by so that's not gonna happen i mean he or he's with well i think that tom king he wants to try to in a sense put them back together but i don't (laughs) know editorial I don't think so because this is the reason why they broke up. I think it's because they don't sell anymore. It's, it's like that's my favorite thing because someone put on the comments of a video: Steve Trevor and and Wonder Woman are a classic couple. I'm like, if they're a classic couple, how come that they haven't been together for like two two to three years right now? Yeah, the, the whole classic thing, and the, I just don't believe that. I don't believe in that at all. The um, I mean, here's the thing. Iconic- it, by that logic, Bat, Bat Woman should be straight because she was created as a character to dispel rumors that Batman was gay. By that by, by that true. rumor, by, by that logic, but we all know she's a better character th- than that. Yeah, and so they created Catwoman and Batwoman for that reason. Yeah, 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 isn't that funny? I think they even had a. A, I think Batgirl was created for uh, to, uh, there was like a, another one, a younger one for Robin for the same reason. Well, Barbara was created as a love interest for Bruce, and then Bruce first. Tim ran with that, which would work if he should if Barbara were not significantly younger. I think that that's the thing is that a lot, and and that's also a thing is that a lot of the animate um, animated. Uh, cartoon fans they don't go back to read the source material mm-hmm. so yeah when you change up the source material in the animated uh, shows or movies sometimes it makes sense sometimes it, it may make the source material better mm-hmm. and sometimes it just screws it all up it really so, screws it up so with Bruce Tim screwing it up of having Barbara um Dick's age, it it really did not make sense, but it makes sense because of how she was created. Now it was the fact that editorial, um, you know, they did de-age her for to have a, a romance with Grayson, but at the same time, it's still. But then again, like, I'm like, why did you do the relationship with Batman? I, I I get why they de-aged her, but the Batman part is like. <laughs> but anyway. The thing about this is 
going back to to Tom King, he, he even he admits that like, listen, there are problems with the market. And my favorite thing is when creators complain that there are problems with the market, but they don't take any effort to fix the problems with the market. Yeah, it's because it's kind of like they want to blame the fans for not supporting. But it's like, well, you're giving the fans that have complained, especially Twitter X, you're giving them what they want. And they constantly show you they are not supporting the books. They are not buying them. They they pirate them. Yes, and they lower the expectations of these books. And like I said, they go in phases of the six issues, 12 to ongoing. And 50% of the books can't even make it past the first issue, really. Mm -hmm. Um, And debut so low. So you, instead of trying to pander to obviously the vocal minority, you think that they are the majority, but they're not. Instead they're clearly to, not yeah instead of trying to pander to them just you know bite the bullet in a sense and whatever the controversial type concept that will make the money and that is creatively that will you know create a challenge take the risk and that's what did uh the deal was doing with new 52 and he was proud of it at the end even though he screwed it up himself he still said that he was proud of it because they did take the risk and it was worth it. And it yeah, did it make revitalized DC sales. Yeah. But but when he went back to rebirth and the status quo, he said he said it that rebirth made him um, made him realize why he re- why they rebooted in the first place. And... Exactly. Now, speaking of uh, of initiatives or things that that they started, so it's kind of interesting if you've been paying attention. There have been a lot of crumbs about Super Wonder of late in comics. So let's go through those, shall we? So, mm-hmm. so we've got so a lot of this is going to be from the Conrad uh, Wonder Woman run, which. There are some things to like about it. There are certainly some things to hate about it. But <laughs> they definitely had Superman in, in a lot of these issues. Yeah. Okay. So with, um, I think the first one was when Diana came back from um, Asgard. And I think that was issue 780, mm-hmm. I want to say. But they hug. And oh, yeah. it was, um, he said that he didn't want to believe it. And Hug, it was very much a platonic, you know, I miss my friend type Hug. That was really cute. Mm-hmm. Then you have, um, I believe this one is from 788, where the theme that you notice within other panels that uh, you will be showing is the word always. Mm-hmm. And it's, that was pointed out is that they're saying it's that bold. I, it's even bolded yeah so the quote is um all i'm saying is you can always call on me you know if anything uh, is wrong or something like that and diana says she knows that she can't um yeah. with the conrad and clunan run i think it was conrad that wrote clark and diana's um interactions and i believe he said that his inspiration was um new frontier ah i definitely see that there yeah i like that yeah so i mean even even with that new frontier they were basically best friends with benefits because diana obviously with calling him my cow she she basically you know took ownership ship of him um regardless of at the end that trying to have lois in at the end mm-hmm. i still that that part of the book it confuses me still mm-hmm. to this day because mm-hmm. there 
there was never any build up to him being with Lois. So it's kind of like, why at it's the like, end? Well, never build up with him and Lois. If only we had two animated universes where they did that. Oh, wait, we do. Yeah. Awful. But it's, so th then we get get with this because it's kind of funny is I hear so much about how the Conrad run sucked. Then I see stuff like this and you're like, you know what? I really like, but well, actually well, one more thing. There was another Justice League story. I am pulling it up called The Last Ride where yeah. as soon as uh, Wonder Woman and Super, because the, the premise of this story is that Justice League has disbanded and they're get, getting back together for a job. And they meet up at the at the watchtower. And of course, when Superman sees Wonder Woman, they're all very happy and stuff. And then he, he gives her another hug like that. Yeah, that was a the thing is it it feels like writers have to kind of like make a stance that this is adjacent to mm -hmm. continuity. And so they have to set the that Clark is with Lois at some point. Mm -hmm. So when you have those moments of Clark and Diana's interactions and them hugging or or anything mm -hmm. like that, it's kind of like they have to give you a reminder that no, he's married. But it's like, do we care? Morris. No, <laughs> we D do not. Definitely. Care about well, well, trust me, I, I could care. I couldn't care less about Lois Lane. Right. So, so yeah, that, um, you also had Wonder Woman, uh, Black and Gold, but yes. those were, um, out of continuity. So, I mean, you can really get away with those, but yeah, anything with, um, and Wonder Woman Evolution, mm -hmm. um, Stephanie, uh, I forgot her, yeah, Stephanie Phillips, she wrote that, and even there, she did mention Lois, but it was a it was a small mention to know. Okay, so this could be in continuity, but mm -hmm. um, throughout the whole story, it was basically Clark being Diana's conscience, mm -hmm. and when she was taken in that story, I honestly I don't understand that story a lot. Um, but Diana is transported somewhere and her and Clark was having a race. He's, he gets called on a mission and she somehow gets transported somewhere. And the first thing she does is call for him. Mm -hmm. And while she's going through this or whatever, um, there's an issue where she has to fight the Justice League and mm -hmm. she tells him, um, she says, the one person that I could trust, you are. You, you are supposed to be that one person. And um, they start fighting. The fight kind of ends abruptly from the next issue. And um, in her conscience or whatever, whoever this is, pretending to be Hippolyta, she says, basically, like, you let the Kryptonian or you let the alien weaken you. So it kind of say it's kind of saying that basically Diana's, you know, her vulnerability is with Clark. Mm -hmm. um, then the end of the um, story is she is unconscious and she wakes up in the fortress of solitude with Clark. They, the Justice League has found her and, um, but she has nano, uh, like little nano things in her blood system. Yeah. And uh, he says that they'll, they, he will run some tests and he will help her get them out and stuff like that. And it ends there. And they hug. And he says that um, she gives him hope. So, yes. yeah, it, it was a very well, it's even cute with this. Moment. And by the way, with this one, we could probably use this, something like this for a project we're working on, cough, cough. But I, I like <laughs> when uh, she when she says, again, emphasis on always, like you're saying earlier, I'll always come when you call. Is this when he came home from War World? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. so, you know, that really coincides together because 
Clark says, you know, I'll always be there when you call. If you know, right there. And then here is Diana saying, I'll be there. You know, I'll always answer your calls. So that was a very nice little, you know, back and forth thing. I don't know if that was, which might have to ask Conrad if that was a coincidence or something, or was that intentional? Conrad, if somehow you're watching this, please come on our show. <laughs> and also Charles Sewell. But anyway, so c- continuing on. But th- then we have this other moment that I really dig. It's fr- it's from One Woman 793 when Super- when One Woman goes, I knew you'd come back. You always do. And Superman, again, says always, I'm always going to be here for you. I mean, this random... Okay, so this is part of the uh, welcome back of um, Clark. It was a, a really... So they have a tie-in of kal return. Mm-hmm. And at first, I was a little peeved at first because I was thinking that they were purposely ignoring Diana because they mm-hmm. had a Batman um, little special. Then they had, uh, I think, another special with other random characters. And it's kind of like, where's Diana's reaction? So mm-hmm. I guess maybe at the last minute they added for for her reaction or whatever to be in her own book which is nice um so yeah within this first within the first part of this uh issue it seemed a little flirtatious because they're talking about um haikus and being poetic about looking at uh earth um from the watchtower and Diana says, did you do that on purpose? And she is little like she's twirling her hair. And <laughs> he and he he says something and she says, you know, you're a farm boy, but you you know about science and stuff like that. And he's basically trying to belittle himself, but she knows better. Then there's a um another scene there, like I guess in the vents of the watchtower. Mm-hmm. And um Bruce says something sarcastic to Clark about getting his cake dirty or something. And so Diana says, no, Clark knows a thing or two about getting his hands dirty. How much you want to bet Bruce is like, get a room, you two. Right. So then you have this scene of, you know, of, of Clark saying, um, it's a Trinity hug, but uh, Clark is saying that they don't say it as much, but they love each other. They love her. And j- he's speaking for Bruce, too. But it still, you know, doesn't really seem like that. But, okay, we can go with that. Bruce is, the way he's written, he is written a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say softer, but but just a little bit more friendly. Which is okay, but sometimes some writers can go a little bit overboard where it doesn't seem like the character. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, even though Clark and Diana are his, um, they're his friends, he still has this guard though. He's not too laid back with them. So, um, so yeah, but this was still nice. And then you have this scene where Bruce is looking for, um john jones oreo like stashed oreos and so this random panel right here of diana saying yeah you i knew you would come back and clark's just randomly saying i'll always be here for you and then how much you want to bet again but bruce's like I, I, um I, I i'm trying to find oreos i don't want to be here while you two are practically making out with your eyes and and also there's another scene where Diana says that she she will try the cookies first because Clark has a sensitive uh palate like his mm-hmm. taste buds are sensitive. And honestly, I'm like, how does she know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a second here. <laughs> That's the thing. She knows a little too much to just be his platonic friend that doesn't really show up that much in his books. And the thing, the reason why that diana doesn't show up in there was rewind um back there was a tweet in this uh asked who are um who is 
Superman's best friend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ignored Diana purposely because, first of all, she's a woman. Mm -hmm. And they want to not acknowledge her because of Lois, of course. It's always because of Lois. And we're trying to say that Lois is his best friend because she's the wife. And no, because Lois doesn't know Clark or Cal or Superman, all three, basically. She doesn't really know him to be a best friend. She has mm -hmm. never been, you know, in that type of, they've never had that sort of um, exploration as best friends or as friends, really. It's just, you know, rivals to getting married, and, mm -hmm. you know. So to s they're not really even friends. If they weren't married, they wouldn't be friends. And, and it's been established that Clark doesn't really, he isn't exactly open to Lois like that, you know. And, um, and he holds a lot in, a lot, he holds a lot in. And, um, yeah, it is not a, a friendship there. So to say that your wife is supposed to be your best friend or your husband is supposed to be your best friend, yes, that is true. But that is not a I'm not seeing that them. here. And then yeah. we get one of the great – the reason why I bought Wonder Woman 800. And a little interaction that you have with Michael Conrad. Yeah, so – this right here was quite a, quite a surprise because when Bertel first um, posted that, again, was thinking that it was just a fan, um, a commission or something like that. Then she said, no, it's for a, um, it's for a book. So, of course, we would think that it's for Elseworlds. And then they give the... Um, creative team announcement for Wonder Woman 800. And then you get the um, solicit for Wonder Woman 800. So it's like, oh, it's a dream. And Bertels is, um, she's drawing it. So you have this anticipation of, okay, what is this? And of course we just think that, okay, it's a dream, it's Diana's dream. But it's very with, reminiscent of the George Perez Wonder Woman one where she started having dreams of being very close to Superman. Yes. But this is also Diana visiting the other's dream. Like she mm -hmm. is magically going into other people's dreams. And Batman's so, dream is about being a kid again. Yeah, Batman's dream is about being a very sad you know, kid that needs to be comforted by like a mother figure, which I have no idea how you can even try to um, put that as romantic at all. Like, no. Mm -hmm. um, Steve's was being in a, a battle war of, uh, um, of uh, World War Two. Uh, Siegfried was, I don't know where he was. It was, it was very much a lot of snow or something. Mm -hmm. um, Etta's, hers uh, was basically like the golden age era. And I think it was one Donna, you had the Wonder Girls, Donna and Cassie. Cassie, hers was um, Young Justice, the old, I think it was the 90s um comic of young justice hers was that they actually was supposed to have a cheetah one mm -hmm. but it seemed like batman might have taken the place of cheetah oh boy yeah because he bruce gets the hand me downs because uh, it was an extra page. It, it just seemed like it didn't fit. Even if it was supposed to be a Batman dream, it just, I don't know. It just seemed like it wasn't supposed to fit there. Um, 
and then you had Donna, which establishes them as uh, sisters. And you say basically the best for last is Clark. And Jen uh, Bertel does the art. And they're, they are talking about like him having the weight of the world on his shoulders and mm-hmm. how he holds in, you know, his stress and his his sadness and pains and stuff. But with Diana, he can obviously kind of, you know, release that and she can understand him and they can just be like the perspective that the world sees them they can see each other in a total different way and yeah Yeah. it is basically saying that you know here we are as the as like these powerful beings but we are and yeah you're saying that she's um very beautiful like this yeah i'm like he's saying so much beauty and he's staring right at her and their faces are mere six centimeters away he while well, he has his arm wrapped around her and i'm like um <laughs> yeah that is <laughs> i mean this is very... i'm sorry that ain't platonic no matter how you try and explain it and this is why i don't want diana in superman books she was in the superman books um in the early 2000s and rebirth and well rebirth was her most mostly like a mouthpiece to oh, okay. for the status quo um but when when they were trying to do the uh relationship in the 80s it was of course the crossover of building towards it then burn messed it up with the whole um with action 600 so their relationship kind of kind of depleted in a way Mm -hmm. um and then you have the 90s where they're building to clark you know marrying lois so of course you can't have diana (laughs) around Mm -hmm. with trying to force that relationship and then you had writers who basically was for the marriage and wanting to try to keep the the relationship going so if diana was in the book, she was used as a mouthpiece. Or you had like Rucka um, trying to, you know, basically say that they're just friends, that there's nothing, you know, um, between them. Or completely ignore that they are, I mean, you can at least try to make them friends, even though, yeah, it's natural to write them with that tension. Or but, but, artists, it's also. DC markets them as best friends. That's the thing, too. DC markets them as best friends. Yeah, in in the Wonder Woman book, she, Clark, um, during the Our, Our Worlds at War, um, yes. he said that she is my best friend. And that was pointed out on the Twitter um, that their friendship is mostly explored within Wonder Woman's books because it's free. She she is free to do that, but on again the Superman side is because he is limited with Lois. You can't have any other female character, um, basically that feels that she can overshadow Lois. Mm-hmm. You can see right now with the books, even during Rebirth, um, where is Cat Grant? You know she's. She's nowhere. Um, Lena, even though she's with Steel, she still. She was in Steelworks. Yeah, but she didn't really interact with Clark, you know, like the old childhood. A little friend. bit near the end of it, but I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, any other female character, you can really see that no other female character is within the superman book i think marcy is but she's uh lex's assistant or whatever so there there's really no type of romantic anything with her in the first place so yeah you can have her i gotta ask you this by the way so how to feel to get a response by michael conrad well this right here that wasn't me that was the um okay the admin okay So 
she um she was responding to another fan that was really exciting and was like you know when you see this page honestly you would think that they are becoming a couple Mm -hmm. so the fan did say so is this real um what is this from and are they are they a couple so the answer was you know at least to her which we basically all had that same type of um thought was that is it was basically like what we know Clark and Diana's relationship is is best friends with benefits best friends with that underlying tension or you know j- just that and it does have this ambiguity to it and for Conrad to basically be like yeah that's what we're going for is like yeah you can do that with them you don't have to have them in a romance like that you can write them as best friends with the underlying tension or whatever and yeah we will eat that up (laughs) because we love it we love it it's cool getting acknowledgement from the creators like remember the highlight of the show was when we heard dan and dio talk about where he wanted to get rid of the marriage and i was like yes give me more inject it into my veins right and and that's the kind of interaction that you're supposed to have with the creators. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing is during rebirth, it was like, it was basically a witch hunt. Yeah. Who was prone to new 52, throw them in comics jail. And if any one that supported Superman and Wonder Woman together, they would be demonized for sure and especially okay so liam sharp mm-hmm. he's a great artist oh yeah but he did the um brave and bold wonder woman and batman <laughs> six issues. The, the one where i love where tom king legit says this won't this is never gonna happen so well that is a different one this is oh, okay this is his six issue mini um yeah and he was very disappointed of the sales of the book basically is diana um i guess it's the irish gods Mm -hmm. and uh, celtic gods my bad the celtic gods and there's a war or something like that so she at and i guess one of the gods or something like that get murdered some something a creature gets murdered Mm -hmm. and somehow diana needs help from the world's greatest detective even Mm -hmm. though diana can solve this herself um and it, it it really does show that diana and bruce do not have a type of partnership at all it's it's very um it's, it's just really just not there. He want he did want to have like this way of when Tom King wrote well, he didn't write it, but when he did the um the plagiarized Immortal mm-hmm. Beloved oh, issue. Liam Sharp, he wanted to capitalize on that, ride the coattail and with this book. And he also had a gal when she was at a Comic-Con take a picture with the first cover of the book, too. Mm -hmm. And so he was trying to get the promotion, you know, for his book. And with that, he he wanted Bruce to get drunk and basically try to flirt with Diana or... Oh, God. Or... um, That's an insult to Batman. Yeah, he he wanted her. He wanted him to get drunk, flirt with her, or even try to you know push himself on her. And like, so basically, you're what? trying to do yeah, it it yeah. But that uh, was taken out. <laughs> that, that, that sounds very Garth Enos. So when when the backlash of Tom King's issue came out and the backlash for his book, um, he he wrote that out. So the book pretty much, it, it tanked. It did not uh, sell at all. He was very disappointed. 
he went on a Twitter rant. He um, also said that when he had like a spotlight, a, a writer artist spotlight at a Comic Con, only 15 people um, attended. And yeah, so he, he really like tried to push for his book, which you should always, you know, push for your book. And he, and he really thought that a lot of people would, um, would support the book because it's Batman, you know, the Batman and Wonder Woman to think that they were like what people wanted, um, Rucka, of course, he wanted that, uh, to try to force a relationship and and also he before the book came out Liam Sharp also uh he wrote on his Facebook that it was Superman and Wonder Woman fans that were um like trolling him or or saying you know mean comments and it was kind of like what you know, no, no one of Superman and Wonder Woman. You, yeah, you have bad apples in in fan bases or whatever, but Superman and Wonder Woman fans practically we're, left we're DC. Too. Yeah, we're yeah. like, yeah, we're not gonna. Is we're gonna tell us we suck? Why are we gonna hang around? Yeah. So, and this was after the Reborn thing, uh, that oh, whole God. thing too. So, and it was also um, in the midst of uh, Justice League. <laughs> uh, okay, you know what, Britt? <laughs> you said that on the show. I got to play this clip. Hang on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Why did you say that, Dad? <laughs> right, so it was, it was between that when they were trying to, when, you know how, they thought that um, Affleck's Batman was going to be with Godot. Uh, Even though that was two. never the plan, if you listen to Snyder, I love that. Right. So they were trying to kind of like ride this this whatever idea that never came into fruition or whatever. And yeah, so it, it failed or whatever. And um it, it was just the fact that Liam lied on a fandom, and and that was the thing to that was a thing to do. That anything bad or anything any fan that had something to say against what was happening in Rebirth was a Superman and Wonder Woman fan, or that anything bad that happened within the comic market or within the industry it was because of the New Fifty Two. And that's like when they keep blaming all the DC movies under performance on Zack Snyder. Yeah, man, it, it's, it's it's so funny, Britt, how the new 52 is essentially the Zack Snyder of the comic books. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's it's really ironic because the Snyder verse, in a sense, it started in uh, 2013. Um, new 52 was. Um, 2011 so yeah it it coincides it just astounds me all the similarities because the exact same stuff that was done with with the snyderverse almost is done with the new 52 no wonder i love the initiative so much <laughs> yeah and, and and it's the fact that it took both concepts initiatives took risk and it tried to put a little realism in you know in both the movies and the comics but mm -hmm. the main factor of why the initiatives didn't last as long as they should have or you know it's, it's this whole thing that it was a screw up or whatever is because of editorial or the higher ups of WB it wasn't the creatives. It was, or or it was the fact of the nostalgia, you know, those people who are stuck on that, that ruined the concepts. New 52, they had the whole plan. It, it modernized the, the um, 
characters. Batman didn't really need modern uh need to be modernized because he was he was the cash cow, been the cash cow. Green Lantern didn't need it either because he was uh pretty much number two for DC. Um Flash was was heading up there as third best selling, I, I believe best selling character and then superman was dropping and then wonder woman was um it was embarrassing for wonder woman because as great of a, a female character that she is and but she, the creative teams has these ideas of her and you have to walk on eggshells but it, it's, 52, uh, uh-huh. i'm sorry go ahead what I was saying was New Fifty Two with her origin. I'm fifty fifty on it. I I see the creative, like what we're doing. I see, you know, the potential of how that can, uh, the potential to give stories, to give drama, especially with her. Yeah, not only is it that, um, the god she's already connected to the gods, even if they gift her as the clay origin but it's even more so something when she's like the prodigal daughter of the king of the gods and you have it kind of links her more into greek myth because you have like heroes like perseus and achilles and it it, it, all these like demigod like beings so it's kind of consistent with that and now that's what i think azarella was really going for is he's trying to go for that more clash of the titans like feel Right, so you so you have that, and and it and it works. Um, it really does work for Diana. I I love the God mode. I love the drama that comes about. You know, like I said, her being like the prodigal daughter and like the perfect daughter. Um, and to to basically shake Olympus. In, in... I just I love that I love that run so much and the thing is like even the run that came after Azarello with the, the the Finches that was really good because that was actually where they wrote in that that Diana wants kids with Clark it was in that run and I also have that signed so <laughs> so um, I, I, I met uh D- David Finch at a con two years ago and even I asked him Wonder Battle Super Wonder he said Super Wonder. I didn't go Super Wonder versus Lois because I figured he would probably go Lois, but I was like, okay, you know what? Let me get a thing on that. He's like, yeah, I got to go Superman and Wonder Woman. And I'm like, I knew there was a reason why I love you. Because, I mean, with going with the history of the characters, and we um, hit this too, of the Trinity concept. And really, DC is so hell-bent on trying to make the Trinity concept as something solid. When it's not like we said, Diana, she she can't be in the Superman books because of Lois and in in the fear of her um, being outshined, and and that goes back with the best friend thing. Diana, Diana's best friend is Clark. Clark, he feels that Diana is his best friend, but that that's only shown in her book. With Clark's book, of course, Batman can be in the book because it's basically bros it's a bro club and you know and that <laughs> i would love it if batman shows up in the fortune of solitude soon like what's up bro <laughs> the, the justice league turns into a frat club i mean that's basically what it it's is it's kind of what it is if you ask hal jordan and guy gardner so there you go yeah and um and then you have jimmy i mean honestly jimmy is Clark isn't even honest with Jimmy, so I don't know how you can say he's the best friend when he doesn't even know his secret identity. So, you know, that's that. But, um, but yeah, in, in Diana, she never was in a Batman book either. Like, they've never had any, like, interactions that solidified them as friends or anything like that. So, so the Trinity concept is very superficial. It's um, as we said o- in the previous episode. Yeah, the only connection really is that Clark is the connection. He's the bridge 
they try to put Diana as the bridge, but she's not. It's Clark because Clark is bros with um Bruce, and he has his work wife, best friend. You know, it's like, hey, Bruce, this is my very complicated because of editorial uh friend named Diana. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I would love if that's the intro. If DC got really Deadpool with him, became super like self aware. They were like, hey, this is my. I can't define a relationship because if I do, the people on Twitter w w will have a conniption friend. I mean, look what they did with Crisis. Look what they did with the 40 <laughs> seconds of Crisis. And I'm like, it, you even can't though... even talk. Uh, you can't. By the way, another person, I was on a stream yesterday, as a matter of fact, another person was talking to me about Crisis. He goes, Oh my gosh, I love that. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, these are the people DC needs to be listening to. Yeah, because, I mean, the thing is, Twitter X as well first in general Twitter X uh stock or whatever has gone down what did they say like 63 percent so mm -hmm. you know yeah the, the platform is basically dead and secondly like we said it's the vocal minority they are not supporting anything so like stop trying to pander to them stop trying to comfort them when they aren't uh buying things and twitter and then, stock is in fact up oh it went back up by 60 by 0.66 percent hmm. i wonder what happened it, what, it, what it probably is, is that you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of bad press surrounding uh to twitter and a lot, some of it is justified, some of it is very much not. It's just because who runs Twitter. So you're going to have that. So I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, but the the point is, these companies can't really consider Twitter a, a legitimate source because Twitter has shown, as we've said earlier in this episode, and every damn episode on the show, they uh, even Mark M uh, Millar, by the way, that's another guest I want to get on the show. Even he said, listen, uh, less than 5% of the comic book reading audience is active on Twitter. Exactly. Yes. And, and, and also when the crisis, um, when the crisis, uh, someone tweeted that out or whatever, being hysterical, they were saying that why, um do people want them clark and diana to be together and they said it's just general fans gen, gen, it, yeah it's just the general audience like well you do want to have the general audience well, <laughs> um, and arguably attention. based upon the sales of superman wonder woman and the new 52 it's not just the general audience yeah and and to try to make it seem like that is a negative i i will never understand how is that a negative that's what these people do not get and i say this every time on the show i feel like a broken record i say that when they make movies they're not going for comic book fans because there's not enough of us to make the numbers that these that, that these studios want when these studios make a movie they are going for the general audience that's why you have like that's why stuff like the Snyderverse was successful because what Zach did is he said, "Hey, listen, I'm going to break these characters down to their fundamental core, so you can understand why these characters are, are great and awesome, why people love them." Then here's what Zach did, as opposed to like what Tom King does whenever he tears down a character, he built them back up. That's what you have. That's what a lot of these deconstructive people don't realize that you have to build them back up after you've torn them down. Because you only tear them down to get to the heart of what makes that character so iconic and awesome. That happened with me because I thought Superman was a joke until I saw like Man of Steel and the new 52. And then I was like, okay, I get it now. Yeah, that is basically the whole thing of what the new 52, the point of it. And again, a lot of the DC Twitter people or whatever x fans they want to ignore the dc documentary like they ignore it <laughs> the play. i love where that one person was like well they could have at least mentioned about reaper save dc i'm like because it didn't or the fact that they said that um it was a fluff piece for new 52 it's That's like why it's awesome it was crazy is that they actually gave this is like facts and you still call it a fluff piece well that the other crazy. thing about it is 
And here's how you know it's not a fluff piece. Since Rebirth happened, DC has been trying to tell us that the new 52 was a mistake. And then a documentary comes out that says it wasn't a mistake. That's it's it would be one thing if like they were like, oh my gosh, this initiative is so cool, it saved DC. And then they came up with a documentary. But no, Britt, we've complained ever since the episode one of this show about how DC crapped on the new 52, and that's why I hate Rebirth. And then we get this documentary that not only ignores Rebirth, that's the hilarious part, because I was waiting for that. I was on the edge of my seat going, here comes the Rebirth. And then it didn't happen. I was like, did I hit the fast forward button by accident? And then, no, I didn't. And I was like, I was shocked. It's kind of like how shocked I was when the whole crisis thing happened, because I'm like, there's no way this happened. There is absolutely no. Oh, wow. Right. And the thing is, the documentary was uh, recorded in 2021. Yeah, so, it wasn't like it was like recorded in 2011. Yeah, so so for it to be five years or so after um, after rebirth, yeah, they had plenty enough time. I mean, they showed the new uh. New Frontier, not New Frontier, um, Infinite Frontier. Yeah. They they show those characters or in future state. So, yeah, for it to completely ignore um, Rebirth. That was the hilarious part. A lot. It, it was so, I was so waiting for it and then it didn't happen. I was like, they praised the New 52 because that's right. never happened in an official DC source. Because remember, the pa- the last time it did a DC documentary was it went up to post crisis. That's it. And then this comes out, and I'm like, wow. But speaking of uh, future state and all that stuff, so Britt and I have brought up how there's crumbs throughout New Fifty Two. Now the question is, how do we turn this into a healthy DC sandwich? So Britt, how do we take the crumbs and put them together? So what I was thinking was that with with that, basically you're adding to those is have those little moments where they are like having time together, you know, maybe a mission here or there of of showing their building back up their friendship first. First yeah, and foremost, you, 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 you have you have to build that. Uh, friendship back and not only that but you have to have at least somewhat of a flashback too to show like basically stabilize how did they meet um and the other thing though we have to think about before we start thinking about how to put them together we have to think about lois because he's married to lois how do we work with that Okay, the thing is with lois is that first of all she is a non-entity anyway within well true but but yeah what i would do honestly i don't really care for divorce mm-hmm. i would just reverse reborn and exactly what they did i had an idea on how to do that by the way brit i had an idea on how you could do that so remember doomsday clock what if what document hadn't actually did is he split the Superman ba- backs apart? Honestly, yeah, yeah, that's that's basically the best way to go. Yeah, because that way you could have the regular Superman married to Lois and tanking in sales. So there you go. You could have that Superman. Because the thing that I don't like, is, and, and, and this is the purpose of the New Direction verse I do with Jay Heat, it's that we don't like to take things away from fans. If you like it, and and here's the end part the company can afford to sustain it yeah we'll keep it around and stuff that that was my problem with like rebirth and like the death of superman they did for that is that you had the opportunity to have both now that you had coward superman yes i'm calling him that and our boy in the same universe and he was married to lois and everything you could have explored him with uh, um new 52 clark with diana and really expand that. So you had that awesome story option. And plus, even Jay Heat and I had this idea where the older Superman would be kind of like a mentor to the younger guy. Yeah, but the thing is, that sounds 
very good and very thank you friendly welcoming and yeah. very because that's know, what because that's what you want to do in a niche market you can't afford to piss off a, a large part of your fan base unfortunately right but as we of course went through with the sales the superman and wonder woman book out mm-hmm. so even at its lowest of um tomasi, tomasi ruining the book it still outsold the convergence spinoff book because that convergence book made no sense that's why right so but even at the debut of it if this was like what dc called their most anticipated book they i mean they went full full force of calling them the um the original power couple call it um (sighs) saying that this is the most anticipated book can i call that that comic book appropriation am i allowed to use that term uh i mean at this point yeah i think so because that's what it is they're taking our stuff and (laughs) and labeling it on lois so i'm like hey here Um, you go uh you have it where they stopped they they stopped promoting superman and wonder woman's book like it was just so abrupt and they were and even if they were um promoting it it was the oh no doom and gloom um they're about to break up mm-hmm. so yeah they they were and and what jurgen said he was saying that while superman and wonder woman was breaking up while they was promoting it like that he said that lois and clark was unbreakable so yeah it was purposely clearly they to... weren't because he sold more without lois yeah i mean they were very much purposely trying to dog out you know new 52 and superman and wonder woman's relationship i mean even jurgen boasted about saying that oh yeah me and rucka has talked about it this we had a specific comfort conversation about it and how we will handle it and it's like oh yeah like mm-hmm. no regard and even with um again i don't want to put words in no one's mouth and i never saw him say it but it's the fact that other fans has said that he said that but to say that superman and wonder woman is just like fanboy porn or something like that which is really really weird to which based upon what people say about 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 superman and lois i think you have that backwards bro yeah i mean like the conversation that we saw earlier today of saying that um the reason why some uh people want superman with wonder woman is because she's hotter like well yeah that's true oh yeah that's true (laughs) that's kind of her thing she's as beautiful as aphrodite Aphrodite. that's true but it's so much more than that and to say that lois and clark um lois and steve is like a fit like they are the fantasy of regular people of yeah they're like people. oh i could date these people that that immediately showed me that's what it's about it's not about the story they even told you it's not about really a story it's more like it's my own fantasy and i'm like yeah, oh, th- thank you for admitting that yeah they are living vicariously through these characters and they get mad when they can't when they can't do that so what so clark and diana's relationship basically represents yeah you normal people average people can't even though clark and diana aren't shallow like that it's true that in 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 the perspective of them though clark and diana their relationship isn't upon looks though their relationship is on connection and understanding and being truthful and honest with someone to be open mm-hmm. and and to be able to be vulnerable with and that's something that clark and diana can barely do with uh lois and steve steve he is basically uh, to say that perez i see a lot of people complaining that perez made a mistake with it no he did not because steve he's the first guy that diana meets like a disney princess or whatever and they don't really have anything to connect them 
except for her saving him from, you know, the plane crash or drowning or whatever. Um, that's it. But he can be the first man she meets and learning from him as in, like, he's he's a nice person sometimes. Um, as an older man and as a brother, an older brother, he can protect her. He can, in fact, um, th th those are some of the best parts in the Gail Simone run that I'm going through right now because I have the omnibus. Is that the, she? Uh, is that uh, Gail significantly plays up that whole role about she's more like a father. He's more of a father figure because he's married to Etta in the, in the post crisis universe. Yeah, yeah, that and that lasted for um, close to or you know thirty years. Mm -hmm. And for and for that status quo to to last for thirty years with like no type of honestly Diana the only part of holding back was that she didn't have a constant romantic loving uh romantic interest which again pretty much it was Clark so you know um according to Perez it was Clark yeah so. Um, the thing, so, so I already agree that, so go, going back, back to this real quick. So we already agreed that we have to, so to undo the, we're going to undo um, Superman Reborn because that was dumb. And yeah. the thing is, here's the thing. We could actually play this up where as soon as re, as soon as the Reborn th thing is undone, that's when Diana has that whole thing of, of, of thinking about what's real because remember what reborn did it was essentially a reboot of the dc universe with this new ca canon then all of a sudden diana starts having these flashes of her new 52 life and then everything like starts to merge together a little bit yeah and the thing is i wish that it, it would have been another diana too like mm -hmm. that makes more sense than trying to have this diana her she's with tom king saying that she's only been in manville for 10 years but then during a uh, rebirth she was 10 years and she was only supposed to be like 28 but now she's supposed to be like in her mid-30s mm -hmm. um and uh, honestly tom king has actually um gave her like 10, 10 more years because uh, I think Rucka wanted her to be 28. So it's like, but the thing is she was with Clark since she was 23. So she was with him for five years. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and that would make sense for them to want to get married and, and have kids or, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, that, you should have had two Dianas. And that's the thing with the Tomorrowverse, too, is that it's only one Diana, too. They only showed one Diana. Yeah, exactly. They, they mention Tomorrowverse, Earth 1 Diana, but only as a mention, and it was a, throw, a throwaway line. Mm -hmm. But that is the problem that you run into, though, um, with this whole thing, is having just one version of... of of the character and you're trying to implement different parts of their history and it doesn't fit it, it's no it's a contradiction so yeah i i would split even diana in two mm -hmm. that, well. that works too I'll, I'll, honestly you could do that and then like the although i could get confusing so i vote we keep the superman but but, but like the, the diana part starts like fade away back to her universe like the universe itself starts to heal because having two of every character in in essentially the same universe would get really confusing in terms of the books it would but honestly that it's already confusing with trying to merge all the history together yeah i know and it would it, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it 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 would just be a little bit better if you go ahead and like s split these characters, or again just put them on on a uh, on a different um earth. But with if we have to keep these one uh just one character with the uh with the Lois and Clark marriage 
Now, just... here's a way we could get rid of the marriage and and work really well with this and stick it to the injustice people. Lois Lane gets killed. Like, yeah. here's what you do. <laughs> here's what you do. Remember the Bendis reveal? Yeah. The identity reveal? Have that actually have a consequence when someone shows up at the Daily Planet and blows it up. So basically, we're doing a Kingdom Come. I, I, yeah, kind of like that. Clark does not go crazy, obviously. He can mourn, yeah. 100%. And Diana can help him mourn because she is his best friend. And she's always, I'm putting the I'm putting the Conrad emphasis, I'm going to call it that, <laughs> always going to be there for him. So he goes through a, a journey. He, he, you can even have him say, I don't know if I can be Superman anymore. Just to like echo that. And Diana says, I want you to stop that right now. You, you are Superman. You've always been Superman. And you are strong enough to get through this. That is really good. Honestly, that is a lot of drama, a lot of, you know, an homage to Kingdom Come. And it really just shows that, you know, honestly, I was trying to work around killing Lois because that is the thing that people think is that, oh, Clark and Diana can only be together if uh, Lois is dead. No. It works just as well if she's alive. Um, she just doesn't have a role. But yeah, True. to make, to have heads roll and to like basically <laughs> Twitter stick response, it, baby. But yeah, and where I got that from fans. is my is I I had comic artist Joe M. Sontag on and, and I asked him about this and he said yeah actually what's what would be kind of cool is is if they did kill Lois and then Superman has to like recover from that and then maybe he gets w with Diana eventually. And again, we see that in Tomorrowverse, which is also Kingdom Come. But it's pretty yeah, much that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but to make heads roll, of course, killer, Let, killer, like. Well, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and, and plus you could have from Superman's side. It's like you've always been there for me throughout. Whenever I needed someone, particularly nowadays, you are the reason why I'm still Superman. And then you can have them eventually just get together and you can market it as the real as the return of superman wonder woman the book yes there and now john just put him off somewhere well actually no no, no. He, he, here's the thing hear me out on this the john thing could you could actually do a, a dynamic thing here where now john's stepmother is wonder woman and then now wonder <laughs> woman is in charge of raising john honestly yeah <laughs> Just despite, just it could despite be a really the, cool story because now he's got to deal with ha having Wonder Woman as his mom. Honestly, just despite because how they did Diana in the um, Legacy, the Justice League um, Hitch story. Yeah. How Hunter yeah. was. Yeah, th definitely. And you can okay. have that where you can still have the whole you're not my mom and stuff dynamic that you're inevitably going to have. But you could also have if you want to do like, say, the bi identity reveal and she is there for him and like, I'm proud of you for being your true self. Honestly, Diana fits more so much better with that type of. Um, yeah, exactly. Story. And, yeah, exactly. And she could be like, no, be true to who you are. Yeah, Diana fits. Even with the twins. Di yeah. What really ticked me off was when Lois, when the when the twins uh, were fighting because they were being bullied and Lois says we don't, I know um, you fought where you came from but we don't do, do that here that is so, first off that sounds vaguely racist I'm just going to tell you that right there yes, it's, it it's very proud, and they wonder why I hate Lois but it's like, it, but, but with that but, but with Diana, she, the way I would picture Diana handling that is Pick your battles. She would, but she would then also go to the school and go picking battles. Well, well, like what we're <laughs> working on right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she would definitely go. And Clark is like, pain. okay, okay, trust me, you do not want me to, to, you do not want me to go away with her. Trust me, you do not want me to unleash her. Yeah, the, the administrative, um, whoever is in charge, yeah, definitely the teachers, whatever. Diana Prince will definitely come for you, you know, if you think that bully. I mean, she would honestly probably demand for the school to have like a, a, a uh, 
have all the students go to the auditorium and she will basically talk about all the kids and say how you know that these are her kids don't bully her kids but also don't bully the other kids and have this whole entire oh boy. like yes yeah, and then clark's like okay but it, Honestly, it's, it, i can see that yeah i can see it too and go, going back to the wonder uh, to, to the lowest thing you can market it as the death of lois lane but here's where we're going to be d- d- different from the dc writers we're going to be respectful. We're not going to like go like completely like, oh my, we're not going to have Wonder Woman go, oh, you feel true with me. No, we're going to be very, because Diana w- would be respectful of Clark's time with Lois. She 100% would. There's no way she's going to dunk on, on Lois. Yeah, not like how Lois dunked on Diana when um, Tomasi had her saying, well, you could have married Wonder Woman and Clark saying, well, she doesn't have a, a pulser. And I'm it's like, like oh, that's just so stupid. And then later on, you can market it. At, and then, so uh, uh, later on, you have this. And then we, you, you can make it, by the way, the John by identity reveal is when John starts to see Diana as his, has his new mom, essentially. It's like when he finally accepts her because she accepts him. See, yeah. you can tell compelling <laughs> stories this way. And you know, the thing is, what is so crazy is that if, they never had John, like, just in general, too, but really, he's never had, like, an actual interaction with Diana. Like, if... Not really. Tom King is trying to retcon the, uh, that he did, but I'm like, I, I, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, he he's trying to make it seem like, like, you have Damien and John as friends, but to make Diana trust them as being like babysitters i you don't have that build up at all john has been around for almost 10 years and he not even with superman supporting cast with with jimmy with perry with anyone he does not have any type of interaction with anyone like important um honestly not even with lois either as as a mother as as showing her um, her perspective of being a mother and just that, you know, mother and son bonding, you don't really see that either. Mm-hmm. And, and then with him being um, aged up, even with Clark, it, it, it was very, I, I, I would say it was broad strokes of things, you know, but, but that actual, um, in-depth development you don't see that at all with john he he's just basically thrust you know into continuity into the whole scene but you had this whole time of you were so um focused on retconning new 52 when showing superman's uh you know new history or whatever the whole process of of the pregnancy of of even with um adopting even though Chris biologically Kent. they're not compatible so there you go right even uh ado- the adoption of Chris Kent that mm-hmm. Jurgens he he didn't want that to be brought up he mm-hmm. didn't want Connor as Superboy he didn't want that um Connor to be brought up you know all these elements that you purposely ignored that you quote unquote erased for John to fit, obviously he does not fit organically within continuity or within anything if you have to have to take away and erase other characters and other development. You have to turn off your brain and pretend that these stories doesn't exist anymore because of John not mm-hmm. fitting. And, and I'm like, ah, no, everything's canon now. So it all happened. So... <laughs> The other thing that you could do, by the way, the way I would start the, this whole Death of Lois Lane series, here's how you really screw with people. You have it where it opens up, it's in a graveyard, and Clark is, and you frame it like, you know how like Tom King is framing it like the Sovereign is talking to, to Wonder Woman's daughter? The way yeah. I would do it is throughout it, Superman is speaking to this unknown person he, he's, like, he's like standing in front of the grave there's a raven-haired w- woman in the background obviously we know who it is at this point but it, you don't reveal who it is 
Luckily, Diana and Lois have the same hair color, so it kind of works as a as a misdirection. And <laughs> what we find out is that he's talking to to the grave of Lois Lane. Like he still goes there. He never forgets her. That's the that's the that uh, I'm, I'm I'm emphasizing that. And he he talks to her, and it's, the, it's basically this whole thing about how he talks about his life since then. He talks about the incident, and then he talks about his life since then. And he says, I'll always re remember you. He turns, and, and then the way it works, that the way we reveal us, Lois Lane, you turn around, he turns around and walks away. The tombstone is Lois, and then uh, he looks up, and then and it's actually Diana is, is the raven-haired woman. I actually can visualize that, and it's very good. Like, this is very respectful than anything that DC has, you know, done. I mean, it's, it's much better than having Clark and Maxima kiss on, even though that was a quick break cover, but having, you mm -hmm. know, them uh, Clark and Maxima um, making out on Lois's grave. <laughs> At least well, you're not doing that. Yeah. The, the other thing you could do, by the way, is have it where it, actually it, it opens up, when it opens up, Clark is like kneeling in front of the grave. The raven-haired woman has her hand on his shoulder, and you can see a little. She, she's wearing a trench coat, so you can see a little bit of the bracelet. So that's the first clue of who it is, and then you could go into it, and you can make it a flashback that later culminates into this is Superman's new continuity. Yeah, I mean that that pretty much works, especially with how old that these characters are supposed to be and you're playing on or even you know let the lowest die of old age that yeah too. we could do that too particularly if your idea of doing like this future state like a continuity idea because that actually works really well yeah and this this right here was the beginning i guess of conrad showing um little you know crumbs of Clark and Diana's relationship and when this came out you know the first issue um Batman fans of course they was thinking that it was romantic of Batman's ghost you know mm -hmm. talking to Diana but she says that that's her friend she called him a friend and she says that when she takes the belt she's saying that like I need my friends with me so mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to she said I didn't want to um like leave him behind yeah she and, even has a green lantern ring around her neck but honestly that was basically ignored of course um so she has somehow she's able to get a a, a lantern ring she got the uh, Batman utility belt there you go and then at the very end yeah then at the very end she gets uh Clark's cape so you have issue one where it's showing that the world is ending you know it's basically in a sense of the irony of like Krypton you know mm -hmm. uh destructing and what what really like a full circle for Clark and Diana is that their first battle of meeting was dark side. Mm -hmm. If you go with the new 52 and then the very ending battle of them is dark side and Clark sacrificing himself, which I thought mm -hmm. was, again, it was probably unintentional of course, but as poetic and, you know, the, the, the writer in me thought that, you know, this is a full circle. And, and we could even do is you could have it where like before Earth blows up, the Greek gods come to him and say, we would like to offer you a spot on Olympus so you don't have to die when the world explodes. Right. And that would be really good. But Clark and Diana, um, with this, when they are fighting Dark Side and Diana, she is... Um, monologue is is you know telling the events of what occurred and how she ended up alone and she says that clark was so vivid in her mind when she when she closes her eyes and how 
he cared for the world even as it's ending. And that's why she loved him so much more. And just that whole part of her, you know, crying and stuff. And I can remember when, and even going back to, um, to researching for this, for this episode was when Conrad got the death threat because Diana said that she loved um, Clark. And, oh, good Lord. <laughs> and Conrad and Clunin was saying that, um, you know, no, you can say that I love you as a friend, you know, and they were really trying to put that out there as they're just friends type thing. And, you know, but it's like, no, you know, first of all, people read uh, New 52. Uh, it's, it's kind of a natural thing to think that anytime Clark and Diana are together sharing page time, that they are a couple. Mm -hmm. And that is, and that is also a threat feeling of Lois fans and to lesser And the Superman that, editorial. That's why they don't put super, put Wonder Woman in, in the Superman books. Right. And, and even sometimes Batman fans, even though they don't really care for Diana in the first place, but you know, to a lesser extent them, and um but yeah so with immortal beloved um uh, immortal beloved uh, immortal wonder woman um how you can do this story is you show clark and diana basically they are at the end of the world uh the end of time of show let us see them going on centuries of adventures of how the world changed throughout you know time how like if they visited other planets if they you know how did earth evolve through that time and let us see them grow old together um let them ascend to the gods before the world ends but they're trying to save it um mm -hmm. and and see if they if they have a family together if you know you can do kingdom come sort of a uh, way of them having their first child or something like that you yeah know, and then I is... and then I like the idea of the gods coming and welcoming them to Olympus because what that, what that symbolizes is the gods finally accepting Clark. It's yeah. even it's even better if it's Apollo that comes and says, "I come with a decree of Zeus." It has been decided by by the gods that, that you are to be welcomed on Olympus for Apollo. Because I'm I'm sorry, I'm canonizing that moment in Superman Wonder Woman because that was yeah. badass <laughs> for Apollo to say, "No, you know what? Yeah, come on, dude." And the fact that he is in the sun fighting against Dark Side, I would say that him being with the, within the sun saved. Oh him. yeah, that actually I didn't think about that. That actually works really well. See, this is why we work so well together. I'm like, wow, I didn't see that coming at all. That's yeah, awesome. that that will be something that this story honestly it gives you a lot of ideas because you can have older Clark and Diana together being immortals and like I said they can see how the world evolves until you know it, it it's no more they can see they can go you know to different planets they can do all these different things and and still be there through time because they are these timeless characters and in tomorrow verse even that uh clark says that you know diana she since um world war ii she has lost or they both have lost so many people because even though he said that they're not immortal um how does he know that i really want to i that's the one issue i have with that piece of dialogue where he goes i'll be alone because we're not immortal how do you know that the earth still has a yellow sun but but also you can see the that black canary in our man has visibly aged yeah they 100 have and then lois she died of old age but clark he basically still looks young he may look like in his late 30s like 
Clark and Diana. Well, the, the way I like the way I like to think about it is that in in uh, World War II, he was about the age of Prime Earth Superman, in in, in terms of the of the Man of Tomorrow Superman from the movies, and at this point, even though he's aged like seventy years, I'd imagine he looks like maybe Max. I don't know, five to ten years older because he he, he visibly has like a, a, a more like I don't want to say wrinkles because that's it, he's Superman, but it's like more like definition I would say. Yeah, his cheekbones and his eye, like up under his eyes has the lines, or whatever. Ironically, he looks and sounds like Henry Cavill. <laughs> he does look like Henry. And isn't it ironic that Wonder Woman sounds like Gal Gadot? And I think that that was done on purpose. Yes, she yeah. does have. And that fun fact: accent. she played. Uh, she actually played Talia on the Arkham games. Yeah, she's a huge yeah. DC fan. Honestly, I mean that is good for her to be a DC fan and to be able to um, do the different roles and and also. She's well, great. it's the fact that uh, also DC can't afford. <laughs> they can't afford or... to get new people. That's why yeah. so many of those roles went. Uh, uh, some of, the, of those characters just stood around. Yeah, in the interview, they basically said that they there was um, the producers said that not only is WB rushing the crisis, um, them they wanted to have like twenty movies before the crisis so i guess that will lead up to maybe 25 in all but of course it's only been what t but it reduced dr drastically to 10 which crisis is uh three out of 10. Mm -hmm. and um even before then they only wanted three movies and then crisis so it would have been just six in all and with the budget slashing and you um, had Sam come on to your show and, and tell you about that, they can't afford this kind of stuff. They can't afford the best in animation anymore. They can't afford uh, a lot of voice actors. So it's either people are it's working like on that. In the trailer uh, for part two, they have Batman Beyond and my Buddy and fellow co-host Nick from the Phoenix Press, he brought up that they better have brought back w w Will Freddy to voice them. And in my head, I was like, yeah, it, they probably didn't because A, that would connect it to the DCAU. The other thing is, I don't think they can afford Will Freddy. Well, the thing is, is that he, they do want to um, bring in, they confirm that there will be other characters from prior animation, um, animated oh, movies. And I did stuff. not know that. Yeah, so that is DCAU uh, Batman Beyond. It it should be. Oh, okay. If it is, that's great. I would love that. I would love to. That's the one way I would love to be wrong. As rare as that happens, because I am the bearded lord of <laughs> comics. That is me. Yeah, it's just the fact of his voice. Will it be voiced by the original? Voice if it actor? is fantastic i would love to do that i would love if i would love if batman if prime earth batman meets dcau but they can have like because kevin conroy unfortunately isn't isn't uh, with us anymore but if they did i would love to have um uh to, to have jansen eckles batman tell uh that batman why did you sleep with barbara <laughs> that's what i would do it I would, I would totally dunk on that <laughs> Or they might even just have a um, an homage to um, Kevin. And, or as I said, Bruce Greenwood. And he would, uh, I think that if this, if they were, were, were able to write this in, I think that they will probably have, um, if, and it's also if it's Terry. Mm-hmm. And they have the conversation that my Bruce, like an homage to DCA, um, you Batman to or Bruce to tell what happened to him, and to say like he, you know, passed on or something. And that will be a good thing to 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 
um, respect, you know, Kevin Conroy. And, and yeah, salvage the tomorrow verse as best they can. Because you can, because I'm sorry, if you're doing Crisis, there's no reason for you not to bring in the new, bring in the other characters. Now, the other thing I want to bring up real quick is, is it guaranteed that Super One, bringing Super Wonder would lead to more sales? I mean, no, n- nothing's really a guarantee in business. We're just going off of that. This ha- they when when they did this in the Prime Universe, it led to massive sales, partly because it was part of the new. F- 52 but even this book consistently sold be- uh, b- um better than whatever they were doing in superman or lois or even t- uh, trinity for that matter the thing is though you would say no because of how dc has soured the fan base and mm-hmm. how it, it feels like can the fan base trust dc not to screw it up again. The the other thing that uh, what could lead to that another uh, another part that we haven't talked about since to fix DC is get all new editors. Fire the fire the editorial staff because for one thing they're the ones approving all these crappy books or they are suggesting stories to these writers and the writers are like okay you're my editor and stuff. Or they're also standing in the way of Superman be, uh, of having any type of relationship w- with Wonder Woman in his books. So I'm like, just get rid of them. Because I think that would be a step toward having the fan base trust DC. Because 99 per- I'd say about 90% of the issues DC has lies at the feet of the editorial staff. So if you or fix lack that... Of editorial. What? Or lack thereof, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you get rid of that and bring in more active editors to have a consistent plan, I think that that would at least help, at least help get the sales up when we do this or however we figure out a way to fix DC. The other idea I had, which, I mean, it worked, another thing that worked in the past, ironically, is a flashpoint style hard reboot where you just pull uh, pull it from scratch and say you know what we're done we're going to reboot the universe again actually reboot the universe again just want to be clear on that batman and green lantern are getting rebooted because we can tell new story we can tell those same stories we can we can do blackest night but with the younger dc universe because that would actually be cool and then you build up the stuff organically. Like, well, one of the things I would change is that if I were to do this over again, like we said in our new 52 episode, have a more na- show us Superman and Wonder Woman slowly falling in love. Like, you, you could do like he brings her coffee and stuff. He's like a little more nervous when he's around her. And you can even have like Barry go, hey, 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 Clark, you're kind of drooling right there. Yeah, you can even, even with changing the the dynamic um have steve older again yes to Etta. um honestly well i would say even try to have like lois and jenny this time around i don't know just do something you could that would be that would be something really interesting or having lois with steve that or or they can be to have- t- Brit, hear me out. They can be united in their irrelevancy. Honestly, I um, I in in one story I did have where like Sam Lane, he he has like this uh, he likes Steve because of course they have the military connection or whatever. But it, it's the fact that Steve is is yeah, he's pretty much on par with Sam Lane and he feels like steve has this this yes sir mentality of in a sense how sergeant steel is doing steve in tom king's book where steve is is kind of like he he doesn't really have a backbone and he's a yeah a yes sir kind of guy he's playing off a stereotypical depiction of the military which um, it's the same thing where like you have like 
he, uh, Steve is is like in a room with, with a bunch of U.S. Marines and they're swearing up a storm. And I'm like, that's probably the way Marines are. But it's it's see the problem with Tom King with the military parts of his books. And it's sad because he's written good uh, like m- military portrayals and like Sheriff of Babylon. It's that he's getting really stereotypical with this, even w- with the soldier suicide that he did um, in issue three, I think. It was it, it was very tone deaf. Yeah, that that is a problem with Tom King's writing is that he he really is tone deaf with a lot of things, um, and I just think that he he goes very like literal with things, and I think that well I I um. Some people say he tries to be like Alan Moore. He's he's trying to be like modern day. So Alan many Moore. writers have tried to be modern day Alan Moore, and even Alan Moore isn't Alan Moore anymore. <laughs> and 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 that's the thing is that you have to find your own voice though. And when you're trying to mimic and someone else's, you know, it can really be bad. And I think because that- here's the thing. I know Tom King is a good writer. I've read fantastic books by him, like Mr. Miracle, Sheriff of Babylon, the first half of his Batman run. So it's not like he's a bad writer. I know he writes well, and he does bring sales. I will give this to the man. He brings consistent sales. Yeah, I well, I think that the reason um, what really boosted him off was the Batman run. True, and because true. it was uh, controversial, that that is mm-hmm. why he, I think that that's really what Tom King brings is controversy. So that is why his sales remain up. And, and is, a fun is, story. Is, so some, a comic story and once asked him how he, how he like handle all, all the criticism that his run was getting. He said, I never saw it because I didn't have a chance to get on Twitter because they were double shipping Batman. So I, I was just writing Batman constantly. Wow. See that, and that's the thing. You need to stay off of social media. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't think he is on Twitter anymore. I think he, he is, is. But here's what he does on it, and I approve of this. He uses it to promote art from the book, or like w- what Sam Perry is doing, what he's doing. Like, I can't wait to show you guys what we're doing in this issue. And you know what? That's the way that comic book pros should do it: to promote their book, to promote their art, to promote other people's work. That's the positive. That's the positivity we need on social media. Yeah, I, I mean, Twitter, you, your Twitter X, you're never getting any positivity whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, with, I guess with the other platforms, like even TikTok is bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess you can have like Instagram, like I said, that's a visual. And, and of course, comics is a visual medium. So that works well. And um Honestly, DC's Instagram has a far bigger following than Twitter too. Mm-hmm. And again, and 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 again, you can have more interaction with the yeah, the general audience there. They are general fans. They obviously, I mean, you can tell by the comments that they do not read the books. Mm-hmm. Like not at all. But at the same time, you can still see a little bit of interest there to to help um i guess the blue sky and uh threads is a good platform i don't really threads is okay i i recently started posting on that to like promote episodes and stuff i haven't really gotten that into it on terms of stuff but apparently it's more positive than, than twitter we'll see it, i shouldn't say that on air because then all the toxic people will go there and make it like twitter again so oh no exactly but it, it's it's really annoying but on that note i think that's a fantastic place to leave this this was a fantastic episode as always and let us know below how you would uh fix dc where it stands now would you do super wonder would you do something else if if DC was dead set about 
putting Superman with Wonder Woman again, how how would you deal with Lois? Is, is what I really want to know on that. And uh, obviously, I just want to take another opportunity to thank all of you for watching and sharing the show because this what because doing like an occasional topic on Super Wonder was a little bit of a gamble. But well, actually, no, it, it was a little more bit more of a guarantee. But doing a whole show on it that consistently gets massive views for the channel, that is it's a little overwhelming at times because it really it really shows that like this community is really strong. So I really just want to thank everyone for that and Britt for for uh, co-hosting the show with me. Of course, and thank you for having me. Anytime, everyone always says, "Oh my gosh, we love Britt." So Aww. everyone does that. So. So Britt, on that note, uh, you have anything you can you can uh, tease us with? So, of course, we have all the updates that I need to get to and with the editing. I mean, I have so many stories that I have to post, but mm -hmm. what's holding me back is trying to make sure that, okay, this is what I want to say with this chapter. And so... I do have the Athens and the Aries um, stories. Those chapters are kind of on hold just for a little bit um, to make sure that, especially with the Athens story and having Donna and that what I want to say with that. And, and mm -hmm. especially with um, just trying to have her history, her, her origin, you know, that's simplified and bring that all together and and what she means to Clark and Diana as you know going forward um and that will be something that I will be posting within the uh, next week or two then um Clark and uh Hippolyta taking care of the sickly uh Diana mm -hmm. I really love this story because it's more so like a um mother-in-law son-in-law story mm -hmm. from their perspective especially Hippolyta, hippolyta's perspective of seeing how clark take takes care of diana and how she is more trusting of him that she, he will take care of her daughter you know um mm -hmm. and give him her blessing to be um with diana and then, of course, Austria, you know, her and her adventures, trying to write her a little bit older. She's still mm -hmm. within the realm of being like a in her terrible two phase, mm -hmm. but also a one shot of her a little bit older and introducing possibly a sibling. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was actually a request, but the more I do get you know requests about that i'm like well maybe i should just do a one shot of that so yeah i might do intro uh an introduction of a sibling then of course the big one is our story which i have started um little pieces of chapter two and writing with us going back and forth with the whole um dialogues and stuff and we are going so far into the future chapters but we are getting the dialogue together it's so fun and i haven't cried not quite yet because we've done so much um more of the happy parts so i'm, I'm happy of that oh but i i, I have plans yeah i'm like let me let me soak in this happiness <laughs> before mm -hmm. i start because i know that jared is going to have me balling in like, like an asshole <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. it's it's all fun because i i enjoy writing both the the more idyllic moments and the non-idyllic moments so it's kind of like yeah. i i like doing that balance so before we log off i will announce that February will be the return of Sam Liu to the channel. So be on the lookout for that. So, oh, wow. Yeah, stay heroic, everyone. And remember, Lois Lane is Lois Lane. I'll see you later, everyone. <laughs>